Bitch, I hear it. We're finally getting down to it. The long-awaited Slopcast 6. I know it's been long in the waiting, and I'm going to make it worth the wait. So, first thing I'm going to get into is, like, I was thinking about it, and I was thinking, like, in order to, f- to make a difference, you know, we're going to have to think about the presidency, and it's all these rules about, like, you having to be 35 and all that. So, I was thinking, um, instead of announcing my presidential run, I'm going to announce I am president. So, it's a lot easier of a, a thing to do, you know, like... I am president already, like, dude, I'm not announcing no running business, I'm announcing, like, now business, okay, so that's first of all, second of all, we gotta figure out with this air conditioning, I don't think y'all hearing it in the recording, because I know what I'm doing with the mic positioning and all that stuff, but we need to get silent air conditioning, you know, in all American households, because really it's it's a nuisance you know to have to hear you know sounds and all that stuff so we need to we need to put silent air conditioning in all american households that needs to be guaranteed so basically it's a it's a thing about the now not the later not like what we're going to do but everything we've done we've done everything that's happening it's not like a it's like a book, you know, if you ever read a book, it's like a book. That's how things work. And that's not my opinion. That's not my opinion. That is the way things are. So uh, the thing about opinions, though, is, you know, you got to you gotta be careful because sometimes you got someone saying something, right? And then they think it's true because the, to them it's true, but it's not. And really, at the end of the day, it don't really matter what's true because you're always going to not, you're never really going to have to deal with reality ever. You know, that's kind of, it's like the whole life that's what people focused on is figuring out what reality is. And the, you're, you never have to face it. You literally, you never have to face it. That's what is the, the great truth you know, is you never, you never have to know anything, right, but it's always, like, more and knowledge and stuff is always, always looked at as being, like, wow, you know, if you have a bunch of knowledge and facts and all this other stuff, man, people really value that, but, you know, for me, I've found as a person where I'm working, you know, I'm, I'm working, all right, I mean, I'm not working, but, uh, you know, I'm saying, like, I got the albums and stuff, and, you know, I'm working, and I know what it's, it's, it's like to be creating, and a lot of people ain't creating, you know, a lot of people, well, actually, that's not true, everybody's creating, everybody's creating, because, and well, whether you realize it or not, um, every action you take, each and every action you take is is made is is already you know that's art itself you know like moving your foot right we take one foot we move it and then you take your other foot move that one that's art um you know like on the on the more no i mean so you know it's everything you, everything you do has some some component to it as long as there's a component to it as long as you can see it you're in good shape so it's all about being in good actually well maybe it's not all about it's it's all about whatever it's all about you know that that might not even make like too much sense to a lot of people but that's what it's all about it's all about what it's all about um and all the value of stuff and everything is totally irrelevant you know words and and how they are valued is it's it's up to you to determine that you know if somebody says something and you feel all whatever you feel about it that's it's like you is you feeling it's not them feeling they feel nothing right so you could say you could say whatever people could say whatever they want 
and how you interpret the word or on a broader scale how you how you interpret them as a person is how you're seeing them from your point of view that's what a lot of people don't get a lot of people get caught in this idea of like achieving connections and friends and stuff when you never you never do that's why everybody says they feel lonely or whatever because if you think that loneliness is somehow gonna go away as a result of you getting more friends and stuff you're totally wrong because any friend you've had will have or currently have is a figment of your imagination anyway as we are not capable of directly experiencing other people in that manner so it's interesting to me when people say that kind of stuff that they're lonely or you know I don't I don't know what people say nowadays it's um it's just interesting because it would be totally up to your own brain as to whether or not that emotion would come to fruition and even whether or not you need to accept it like when you when you hear ideas or when you're thinking of ideas or when you're feeling a certain way there's not really any like reason as to why you need to accept it necessarily you can think about something maybe negatively and nobody's really forcing you to accept that you even genuinely thought that or that you know the idea you have nobody's forcing you to think it so it a lot of people never question that a lot of people thoughts go on their mind and then they accept it they think that that is what things are and it's it's just risky being like that but it's it's human but we need to stop thinking about what's human and start thinking about what's next because at this point you know it's not about it's not about what is what was it's about what is and we we got to stop looking at the wases and start looking at the ises because what is is going to be a lot more important than anything else what will be what was ain't important but what is is important is and it even says what is important like you, you don't ever ask what was important or what will be important you say what's important when you're talking to someone is like a lot of this stuff it's set and set set and center set right in front of us you know even even the value of things or how we view the value of things it's only based on how other people usually how other people are accepting them so like if i'm making a statement or i'm coming up with a concept like right now i'm generating a concept the concept is based on usually the acceptance of the concept will be based on like what other people form about the words i'm making and the concept i'm making however not everybody has the same view of the words or concept so you could have uh, tons of different perspectives and when people see these perspectives they're interpreting it as factual or objective when in reality it isn't it's just their own perspective so you have all these people all across the world and they all have their view of what is reality Um, a lot of people they they have a lot of views that are just false and they don't really care about changing them and that's why you have conflict because conflict that in and of itself is is due to the fact that there is a false ideology so now now nothing's necessarily false but the fact that we live in a paradigm where things are valued as true or false that's why conflict so let me let me kind of let me rephrase that statement it's when conflict is present it doesn't mean that somebody's false but if we're looking at it through the lens of our paradigm and our concepts then it would but i guess to further elaborate it's more like if there's conflict present then one or or both parties present in the conflict parties as in the person would 
would some in some way not be aware of the fact that we speak through terms and concepts that can't be defined on a large scale. And if something can't be defined on a large scale, it doesn't have a lot of objectivity to it, but it can still be viewed as objective. That's that's kind of what I think we're going to get to is like the, the way something is viewed is very important. You could view an opinion as a fact and you could view a fact as an opinion, or you could view facts as facts and opinions as opinions. But the problem is, is it's very hard to definitively determine what is opinion and what isn't, and what is fact and what isn't. And this has always been an issue, because really our brains don't care. Um, People will pretend to care. I've met lots of people who act like, they care about facts, and they care about all this different stuff pertaining to, oh, what the truth is. And they're basically just basing the truth off of their perspective or their subjective experience. They're not, they're not basing or figuring out what the truth is. Because truth in and of itself, you talk to multiple different people, what are they going to say? They're going to have totally different viewpoints about what is or isn't true, and all this other stuff. So what all that boils down to, once once you get kind of those premises out of the way, is you realize that the the way you're seeing things, like when you see things, um, it's it's not really easy to experience them because a lot of it is based on materialism, which we know to be shallow. Um, you know that when you pick up, or even when you're watching this video, you're experiencing it through a material stimulus. You could have a dream, and you you could, because now that you've experienced something materially, you can have a dream that is further elaborating on material experiences that you've observed, or creating new ones. And the dream is going to appear while you're dreaming as being real. And that is, that's proof of what I'm saying right there is that as long as there's a material stimulus, people don't feel like, or they automatically won't question the, the, the need to question. They won't even the the question of questioning won't even come up. It won't even come up because there's no need for it to come up. And th- this is why, you know, I'm kind of, I want to take a break from communication because it feels like to me anymore, communication a lot of the times is like, what it, what are you even communicating for? You're just talking for because if you're just talking because you're bored or for pleasure or any of that kind of stuff it it doesn't I can't help but after a while be like what what is the point of even doing any of this you know if you're just talking to people all the time it doesn't even it never amounts to any, well actually no no cuz stuff amounting to something is is totally like I could say this is amounting to something recording or I could say it's not right I could say that talking to people is amounting to something or I could say it's not the difference is is you want to you want to pick activities that are easy because if you if you have to work very hard to make something amount to something then you're going to have a very hard time and you're going to be upset because you have an expectation and it's a very hard expectation to fill. That's the problem with nowadays. A lot of people, because you basically get to see anything through the internet, you see literally everything you could ever possibly want, you get to see. And you see this stuff and then now your mind has like an expectation that's through the roof. There's no way you're ever going to be able to experience things, everything you see on the internet. You're never going to be as good within a specific, like if if you see people doing things, 
that are smarter or better than you in any way, um, you're not going to be able to be better than all of them. And it, it's totally against how we're wired. We're wired to fit in and want to um, be, you know, become, the, in our society, the objective is to get as much material as possible. So when you see other people who are, are better than you, quote unquote, because it's only, better is an awful word. It really shouldn't, it should be used sparingly because there's nothing, nothing's really better if you really think about it. You're not, um, not much is actually better. It's only better if like there's a, there's a belief that it's better. Um, and you have all these people, they think some, they think it's better, they see people doing better stuff, and then now they're like addicted to getting onto that, and they want to be, I want to do that too. So it's about breaking off from the idea that like, what you want is even what you actually want. Like you have to think about when you want something, like instead of just doing it, instead of just seeing something that you want and getting it, for instance, you think about, you know, do I really want this? Or is my mind kind of just, you know, is is the reptile in me kind of creeping out? You know, is, is, is like that part of your brain, you know, the the brain is different thinking apparatuses. You know, we have like the more conscious thought and then we have more like the reptile, the animal kind of like, I want this, I want that. And you got to think about you know, are do you even want what you want, or are are these things are these things important? Like you know, you can't you can't always define you know whether you want something or not. There's not always proof, and that's an important thing because if you know, if there's really no proof, basically there's no point in wanting anything. That's that's what it comes down to there's not really a reason to want something because if you've ever noticed when you do want something, it's it's a, such an inefficient way of, of doing anything because you you start with an objective and then you say, I want that, right? Well, what what is what is the I? Who who is I? Who is who is wanting, right? doesn't it doesn't even make any sense if you think about it if you actually next time you want something or desire anything if you think about it you'll realize that it's totally meaningless it doesn't even matter it doesn't even matter if you want something or not um and the furthermore wanting things is a detriment you know to the to our experience to our experience and and the way we perceive things to want something is not good because it creates struggle. Uh, when there is desire for something, there becomes a struggle to achieve it. And that is not helpful to our condition. If, if you have to struggle to achieve something, then it's, it's not as good as if you could achieve something without the struggle. The problem is, is there is an illusion that is created when you struggle to do something that it is somehow more meaningful. If you, if you can see this too, um, if you have in, in, we'll, we'll use video games as an example because it's a very easily manipulatable. No, actually, even better example would be social. Nah, we'll we'll stick with games because I, I think that's going to be a little bit better for what I'm trying to say if you play one and it's difficult it's going to stick in your mind a lot more than one that is easy okay easy ones are are typically you know you don't want it to be too hard but if it's too easy you just don't really remember it and it never really sticks in your mind and you're never going to remember you're never going to have any memory of it or anything but basically if if you're looking at one completing it is usually hard if you if you want to complete any game that's been good 
there's it's hard there's a difficulty and that is what is quote unquote creating the positive or the good experience so when you put sheets on it for instance and just add in everything you want um you'll notice that you will, you're totally going to lose interest. The The only thing that's fun is the adding in part, and it's only fun because you've struggled to achieve this stuff, and then now you're able to just give yourself everything. And then that'll that'll burn off quick. I mean, you get everything you want through cheating it in, but then there's nothing else to do. And that's what I'm saying is like meaning for so many people without with them out not even realizing it is totally dependent on how much struggle or effort they put into it and that's such a terrible and ineffective way to receive gratification because why would you want your gratification to be dependent on how much effort or how much difficulty something has it's a it's a strange factor and it's natural it's totally natural a lot of people they'll say that they're lazy and don't believe any of them because they're they're all lying and they all they don't understand everybody wants to work hard intrinsically it's natural it's automatic i i've i've really um out of any human i've ever met none of them have been lazy at all they might they might claim to be lazy, but all of them will end up at some point breaking and then they'll they'll be working. You know, like they'll they'll be happy to work and that's normal. I've never in school, you know, everybody goes along with school. There's there's very few people that would actually drop out um with jobs. It's the same way. There's like again in America before all this economic stuff happened the unemployment was like three percent or under like so you know well over 90 percent of people are are not really lazy i mean there's laziness to some extent but people aren't and that's something that is is brought up a lot a lot of people claim a lot of people are lazy and i just wanted to address that that like That's only because you believe that and it's your perception. Because if you look in in a real basis, people aren't. Uh, Any anybody I know is not happy long term not doing anything. I've never met a person like that. Anybody I communicate with, they end up doing something at some point. Like even if people have struggles, even if people have a hard life they will they will still end up enjoying what they enjoy doing as hobbies when it's time to have their free time and then when it's time to work again they'll they'll happily just go back to working and they'll they'll complain about their work but the complaining is not really it's just cuz like people like complaining it's not really legitimate so when people are like working and complaining about it they're they're not seriously complaining about it because most of the time if you're in a position it's it's because it's the position that you're you're most you're most like meant to be in pretty much like if you're working a certain type of job everyone has their purpose and um but and and that's the like a lot of people might take it might get upset with me for saying that but let me try to explain. Like if if I make a hundred dollars a year, then to me that is that would be a normal amount of money. Like if I I'm not gonna use that example, it's gonna be way too hard for you guys to wrap your head around. If I make ten thousand no. I'm gonna okay, if I make twenty thousand dollars a year, then that becomes normal to me. My brain that becomes the normal. And that's normal. If I make 20K a year, I will feel normal. There will be a slight urge to want more, obviously, because that's in everybody too. For whatever reason, you guys think you want more of stuff and of material, which you really don't. But 
there's an illusion that um, the emptiness that's in all of us it will be fulfilled if if we just had more money, if we just had more whatever. I don't. It's usually money. It's but it can be anything. It can be you know religious wise. If we were, if people are religious, then they might think if I was just more uh, religious, then I'd have that whole filled. If you know, you but usually it's money. Usually it's money. Or if you have like an idea of something you want to be, like if you want to be. Again, it's it's usually like main important things, like things within your family, things within your your religion or your school, your career, and it's usually money, usually because that's the means of how we express ourselves and and move around and do things. Um, so, a lot of people get caught up in that. And it's, it's, it's like you make, so if you make 20 K a year, you make, if we're making 20 K a year, if I go from 20 K down to 15 K a year, I would feel a loss. Okay. Right. That that makes sense. Right. But if you're, if you make a hundred K and you go down to 95 K a year, you're actually you're gonna feel the exact same loss, and your a hundred k a year average is gonna be the exact same average as the twenty k a year average. So th- there's no like you making more money could in the in the moment make you feel better, but it's only gonna want you to make more money again. Like like this is how things work with feelings. If you make more money, you will feel good. But that is all past tense because it happens and it passes. And then what do you want? You're just going to want more money again so that you can feel good again. So then we went from 20K to 25K. So now now we felt good. Okay. We feel good. But then it becomes past tense. Then 25K becomes your normal. Then you want to feel good again, so you want to get 30K. So then you get 30K, and you feel good. But then that the time passes, and then that becomes your average, and then you want something else. You want 35K. And you see how this this is like the endless suffering approach to satisfaction. If you do this, and if you act like you're never going to really get anywhere with anything. I mean, you, you will. You'll you'll get some place in the eyes of others and in the eyes of the world. You'll get money. You'll get all this other stuff. But you're never, you're never going to get anywhere. You're just going to keep chasing for stuff that it's like, oh, wow, I have something. Now I don't. And then, oh, now I want to do another thing. And, like, it's just satisfaction that route doesn't really make a lot of sense it's not logical if you think about it um it's only logical if your emotions feel it if you if you and and then that's what my point is is like there's not really a point in feeling that way because it's not an ideal it's not an ideal way to feel so you'd want to you'd want to try to change your ways so if if we look at things in in the media we consume, whether it be games, television, music, all of these things are somebody else's idea. So if we look at TV, for instance, you have shows, you have TV shows, they have a plot with characters, and they were they were all written by somebody. Who was a human with the the same exact capabilities that you have? So, really, you like you could watch a show, but you could equally as good just v- visualize and conceptualize a show yourself in your head without doing anything. You can just lay down, or sit down, or stand up, or walk around and do whatever you want. And you can just come up with a show yourself. You can come up with a game yourself in your head. 
there's no reason really to like and I, I, this is gonna again as somebody who makes music i know that um you guys are gonna yeah i mean it's it's a hit it's a hypocritical but I, it's true i mean like there's no reason for people to listen to music when like that like usually with me that's what I do as somebody who makes music like I'm thinking of ideas in in my head and then when I'm in FL making beats and stuff it, it's like I'm putting that into fruition but you can you can feel the same emotion because when when you feel stuff when you hear music and it feels good that emotion, that chemical response is a chemical response. It's not the music itself that you're feeling. You're feeling a something in your head that's a chemical response. And if you, you, you can just trigger that anyway. You can just feel good anyway. You know, you don't need the music there. You can just remember the music and it replicates the emotion. So the, the emotion thing is a double-edged sword. Because it can delude you into thinking that things are bad, or you can delude yourself into thinking things are good. The saying, uh, it's a harsh reality or a fool's paradise, is a, I think it's a terrible saying, and it, it doesn't make any sense. It's, and a lot of people view it as true. You notice a lot of people view it as true, because a lot of people are programmed in that reality is bad, and reality in it of itself, like if you say reality, it has a negative connotation to it. It doesn't have a positive. So a lot of people are, are trained to think their reality is bad or something or reality is harsh. Anybody I talk to, I don't I don't think I've ever met a person who believe like, well, OK, it, it depends. But anybody I've met, like just in society or like people around me in my family uh on the internet in school any anybody would say that the world isn't perfect and furthermore they would say that it's mostly bad that's what i've i've gathered that is the vast majority of people believe that the world isn't perfect and it's mostly bad they believe that the country they're from isn't perfect, mostly bad, and they probably believe that they themselves aren't perfect, mostly bad. And I just, I don't understand why. Because if we go back to the saying of it's a harsh reality or fool's paradise, if you, if you were the fool living in paradise, I don't really see how that would be a negative. Because... I like how is that because in the statement it's making it negative it's making that reality is harsh and paradise is for fools and it's kind of like people who um they kind of get to go yeah you know if somebody says things are good they're a fool you might not think that's what it means but there's when when a statement when you say a sentence things come out not like there's not just one meaning to something like if you say harsh reality and fool's paradise yeah there's that there's that borderline okay on the surface it says reality is harsh and like you you'd have to be well i know actually that's literally what literally what it's saying is that you you'd have to be a fool to think that things are a paradise it's it's actually a very dark, dark saying. It's a very dark sentiment, and it's viewed as neutral. Most people, if you if you said that saying to most people, they would automatically think it's objective. They would think it's true, and that's what most people believe. That's the majority. I'd say at least 60% and probably a lot higher would think that reality is harsh and paradise is for fools, and... I I don't know. I would just I'm I'm very confused as to why you would want to adopt that mentality. 
I'm also confused as to why people up until now have adopted that mentality because it's it doesn't I don't really think it it makes sense like let's let's kind of fix the statement um really reality is harsh for a fool and if you're able to make your reality paradise you're obviously not very foolish that that's what the the real saying should be something like that I don't care about the specifics. I, it's obviously not worded well. Um, we could we could stand here all day talking about the best way to word it, like um, paradise is reality. Fools think it's harsh, you know. Like we could, but see, and and that's gonna anger people because it's in conflict with what most of you guys are programmed to think, or the the more common saying is, is saying like. It's it's in conflict with the truth that you guys know. So then you're going to be like, no, that's not true. I'm not a fool if I think reality's harsher. But but see, why are the why is it okay to say that if somebody thinks things are good is a fool? You know, like that's mean to people. That that's offensive to people who think that the world is a good place. But the, this is the problem with humans. Is like you don't. You don't care. If you're in a group of people, you could care less if you're saying something that's mean. As long as it's not mean or doesn't negatively affect anybody in that group, you could care less. I see this all the time. I see people who, they get offended by stuff very easily, but they won't, they won't respect other people in the same way. You know, they, of course they won't. They will... Um, because like if if it's they're trying to take their views and more so the views of their bubble. Everybody has a bubble, right? Some people have big bubbles, some people have small bubbles. And this is like their encompassing beliefs. A good way to visualize it is that thing where there's two circles, you have one thing in one circle, one thing in one circle and the two overlap, right? So everybody is one of those circles. And a lot of people are a part of the same circles. So, like, what will happen is some a lot of people in, in a specific circle will get offended by certain things. But they'll still say offensive stuff. Everybody says offensive. I've never met a person who just doesn't say anything offensive. So, that, that's another reason why I don't, I don't really understand why, like, people, people get offended by stuff and all. But it like it's not like you're not saying anything offensive because at at some point like you, it's not offensive to your circle or your reality but like another individual it it probably is offensive too it just depends on i mean anybody can find anything offensive it's just it's not productive it's not really productive to find things offensive and it it doesn't make sense it's like a human weakness that you would want to control you would any anybody would want to minimize their weaknesses and they would want to minimize how how offended they get because it's it's just not really beneficial you you wouldn't want to offend other people either i mean that's that's not necessarily it's not that's not really productive or good either but it's going to happen um and it it's just strange to me because we're living in a time where like people people want other people to do everything for them like as in oh like i can't say it's it, it if you think it's a harsh reality then you're a fool but like if i said if you think it's a paradise you're a fool you wouldn't care you know and you you see this with with america a lot there's a lot of people in america who hate it uh they they live here and they hate the country and there's a lot of people who live in america and they love it here they love the country and they think it's a good country so uh, the problem is is that i feel like if you said you hated the country to a certain group of people it, it would be offensive to them but then if you said it to another certain people, it would not be offensive. It would be like, oh, yeah, yeah, of course, it's a terrible country. But then if you said you love the country, 
you know, to a certain group of people, they they would agree with you and they wouldn't be offended. They would be like, yeah, yeah, we we agree with that. But then to another group of people, they'd get offended, you know, because they hate the country and you saying you love the country is going to be offensive to them. And obviously, I, I think at this point you can figure out, I don't, I don't see what the point of hating uh, the this the like the country would be because that would lead you to more negative thought patterns um elsewhere like basically how thought patterns work is if you accept one thing as being negative you're you're slowly going to notice that it trickles down into to the other areas like one, once you say oh like i hate my country then it's gonna it's gonna go into something else like oh well I hate my country so I hate my country's leadership and then oh well I hate the leadership so I hate the people in my country because they've elected those leaders and then oh like now that you hate the people in your country you see how it's so much hate it's it's just like a, a domino effect of hate and it's not good for your brain to to hate stuff it's it's just i don't know it doesn't um it doesn't feel good right to to hate something is not it's negative for your your health and you know i would just figure like there there's no point in hating whatever happens like and the way the the political climate is is it's like if they're they kind of with what i'm talking about kind of ties into the political climate a lot and like if you really you should just love the person regardless of what party they are or what uh, you know because it's not going to matter at the end of the day like you hating a person they don't they don't receive that hate necessarily you could say to me right to my face that you hate me and it would only affect me if I chose to interpret it. Like, for instance, like a lot of people when they make a joke, there's you you can say something very offensive, but it can be a joke. And usually um, it's not taken as a joke, which is why it's it's funny is like people can say something. But I, I think it's, I, you know, I don't really know. I don't I don't really care. But basically, like. Who's to say that if if you say my music's bad or I hate you that you're not just joking or who's to say that I even interpret the word hate as being a a negative word like so you you hating a external force what whatever it is it could be a human a lot of people hate humans which I don't really understand that cuz we we do live for each other's benefit. We we don't live for each other's like I don't understand why you'd hate somebody. It again it doesn't doesn't benefit you, doesn't benefit them. So, you know, whatever you hate, it could be a color, an entity, uh, a person, anything, a company, a, a word, a co- like, you know, literally anything you hate, you, you're never going to benefit from hating them. You will never. Them, it, like, you know, whether it's an inanimate object, whether it's a living being, I don't, you know, I don't care what the thing is. You disliking it and forming a, a perception or, or preference, right? Forming a preference about it only serves to make you less happy and it's, it's, you're just going to view something negatively, which, like I said, once you view one thing negatively it's it starts to trickle it starts like a stream you know a stream you have one giant water base and then you have a bunch of different it starts to trickle to all places in your brain and then before you know it you have you you're just thinking about stuff negatively all the time so the the other thing is i don't really understand what like why because it's giving in to negativity. I, I understand from my own personal experience that, like, even after I've understood this stuff, obviously I still will 
sometimes dislike stuff and hate stuff and it's but but then I start thinking like well there's there's not really a point in me in me disliking this so there's not really a point in me hating this because it's not going to prevent the thing from being there I can't control other people but I can control my own thinking about it so I, I try to be like well you know I might not like this thing but let me try to to sort of you know taper it off taper that off like to to try to be like well it's it's really okay it's not like I have to hate it it's not like I have to dislike something and that's just kind of how I've dealt with it it hasn't I I've obviously still been emotion that it reacted to things with emotion it hasn't been purely logical as I'd like to be and I, it's the reason why is because it kind of comes back to what I was saying originally, that it, it doesn't really matter. And I assume that's what most people will view it as, is like they don't really care if they're happier or not. They just kind of have emotions and they don't, and they don't care about thinking like why they have them or how to prevent them. They just want to be acknowledged like that that's what it seems like everybody wants validation and acknowledgement for their opinions or perspectives everybody you know um even technically what i'm doing is is seeking validation but i i could argue it isn't because i don't like i'm not i'm not really doing youtube for career i mean i guess the music i can i am and it would benefit me to have more validation and recognition, but I I don't I don't care about it on a mental basis or like an emotional. Do you, you I guess you you know what I'm trying to say it's like I I know people where they crave emotional validation where like. For me, it's more about like if I'm expressing myself, I don't I don't really care if people validate it or not, because um, plenty of people tell me, "Oh, your music's trash," and I'm just kind of like, "Okay, like I don't, what what do you expect me to say to that?" Like, or e or even really, if people say it's good, I'm kind of like the same way. I'm like, "Well, I mean, that's great." Like, <laughs> you know, it's kind of it's kind of like both ways, right? See, that's what happens is. You think that when someone gives you a compliment, oh, you should feel good. But then when someone says something negative to you, then you're just going to feel bad because you're you're setting the emotional response in your brain. So that's why if, if people say something bad to you or say something good to you, you can just be like, oh, that's great. Like, you know, either way, it doesn't, you don't have to put the value in it. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that's the reason why a lot of people don't reach these conclusions is their brain never figures that they need to. They would just think like what they have now and the way they think now is the truth, you know, whereas with me, like I've, I've probably said a lot of stuff, right? I've said a lot of stuff at this point at any point. I could totally change my mind and I wouldn't really care. I know a lot of other people would. They would if like if if in a future point I'm saying things that are dis in disagreement with my current things or not even current cuz there nothing's current. Not everything's always past tense. That you know that's actually another important thing. Um like if if you're trying to like if I change my mind about something which I do quite a lot and like people will say oh well in this video you said this then it's like well you know is is it a problem like do, would you not want me to change my mind like that video was made and they might say well it was only made a week ago it was only made a day ago and I, and i'm like i'm kind of like what like i don't i don't understand how you're like criticizing or or trying to condemn me for for just changing my mind and you're citing like oh well i said this at some point so like it's it's intrinsic for people to not want to change their mind with stuff you know 
and it's it's an interesting thing you know that people they they don't want their minds changed they don't want to see other people's minds changed they just want to keep their own way about stuff and they want to believe their own truth and they won't you know they won't change they won't even think change is possible right because that's that's what i've encountered as actually trying to be more open-minded to a bunch of different stuff you know i've tried i've i've really given that open-minded thing a go and it seems like just as many people who criticize you for being closed-minded will also criticize you for being open-minded because it's it's happening you're seeing it right now with the 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 cancel culture thing like if if somebody says something like years ago even they will get um reprimanded for it now even though it was just something they did or said like a bunch of years ago where maybe at that time it was more culturally appropriate but then now our culture is different so it's strange to me that you would like view a, a something in the past as like the present and think that you Oh, like if I like if I make a statement about uh, real, literally anything I've said in this in this video, I I don't need to believe it. I mean, I could have already changed my mind now. Like I don't. There's there's not really a reason for people to stay rigid with everything. But that's that seems to be what happens, and and if. I do change my mind. I will. I will get flack for it. People will say, "Well, what about the old, the old slop? What he used to say? I like. I liked that a lot better." And it's it's because I've I've dealt with this, and any person I've ever experienced, they they that's what they always will say. If I if I change my mind, because I happen to do that a lot, I I come up with a lot of different ideas. They will say, "Well, what about the old?" What about the old you? I I liked the old you better, you know. I why did why did you change? And it's like the it doesn't it doesn't really matter, right? I don't I don't ever say like it's it's strange. It's strange how all this stuff functions as it does, and there isn't there isn't a a real reason as to why other than the fact that you guys have just never questioned it you guys never think about things in a in that type of manner you just kind of well you know you do what you do and then that's that right so it's just and i'm not even saying it's necessarily good that i uh think like this because it it isn't a it's not always easy because it's like, um, it, since I I don't I don't know anybody I've been able to, like talk to this about, and it actually makes sense to them. Um, other like it's it's just so I mean it's kind of cool, but it's really the same. What I'm trying to get to is like all ideologies at the end of the day, they're the same because of how you experience them. If you if you experience something as being good, then it's good to you, but somebody else could experience that thing as being bad. So, you know, for me, my experience and my ideas are not really any superior to anybody else's because they're just, other people have experienced stuff too, and then their ideas are their ideas, like, it's and it's not any there's nothing really different going on like it's the same difference because all of our brains do the same thing they all average out what we experience so like if if you have a a quote-unquote bad life it's not it's not really a bad life to you unless you believe it is and you see it compared to other people like and it's same with like people like you, you know i like a good life like it's it's kind of a delusion because your brain it only is going to understand what it's exposed to anyway 
So like if you grew up in a good experience, it it wouldn't be good to you. It would just be your your normal experience. And then your brain and the human and it as it does, it it's greedy and it it likes having hierarchy and everything. It's gonna view certain people's lives as worse than yours and certain people's lives as better than yours. And this is regardless of how good or bad of a life you have. You're you're always going to have those thoughts if that's how you're viewing the world. But on the other hand, if if you're just content, if you if you're able to realize, well, yeah, because you understand psychology that regardless of how good or bad your life is, you're you're never really getting anywhere because you're always going to have better or worse from your present state. You're not going to... There's no reason to to be negative really about anything because there's just no point. Like, there's literally... I don't, I don't really know how else to put it, and I know it's, it, it's kind of like... I mean, I've been making the, the point this whole thing I've been you know talking about stuff and all it kind of is my point but like really at the end of the day my point is just there is no point in hating stuff there is no point in being negative there just isn't and I don't like I'm trying to explain it but th- that's kind of the best way I can put it is it it doesn't like I don't know and I, I've tried to explain this to people before and they've told me straight to my face, nah, nah, I like when bad stuff happened to me because it, when bad stuff happens to me, it makes the good stuff feel better. And and that's what most people I've talked to about it, they would agree with that statement and that sentiment. I don't, you know, I think that you you should just go for as, as happy as you could. Yeah, I don't know if I've made that clear enough, but the idea that, like, your struggles somehow make it more enjoyable for it's just that's another delusion like because that that's kind of the whole thing is that the what what is good or bad it's it's all delusional based on your opinion like what there's plenty of people where criminals is a great example of this they think something's good and we all know it's bad but to them they think it's good and if their viewpoint was the majority viewpoint sad as it is their crime you know whatever crime you know you can think of it would be normal you know if most people did it that's that's the thing that you guys need to remember is that our our bad things, the the bad things we do, we're totally blind to a lot of them. Because if most people do them, and if most people specifically, you know, everything works in this fashion. Like you have the world, and then the world is not that unified. Then you have your country. Your country is significantly more representative of your self but it will just use the united states as an example so but then your state is an even is an even better representation of you but then your county is an even better representation and then your you know you keep going down the scale then your specific town is is a better representation than your specific neighborhood you know so it's that's literally it is like all this stuff is it it that's literally it that's all of the stuff you'll you'll see like you guys will find out someday um you know there's this whole thing about like you know you learn something new all the time but but someday you're gonna see learning stop and you're you're gonna see that like there isn't really anything to learn that you don't already know like you you already know how I mean, there's not really anything you don't know, um, but of 
it's it's about valuing information. There, you're never going to know everything if we're talking about the, these like totally insignificant things. You you know everything that's meaningful, but you have to seek it internally. You're not going to get this knowledge from a source. You're not going to get it from me. You're not going to get it from anybody or anything. A lot of the the greatest knowledge, it only comes about through yourself on your own, you know, without seeking an external. And that's something I know for a fact most people in America won't wrap their head around. And most people in the world won't wrap their head around because... The way we learn is we're shown a teacher, the teacher shows us an external stimulus, and then we copy it, and then we pass it on. But the the best ideas come from within. Within each of us, there is a vast amount of information that remains undiscovered. And this information is something that we all have to, as individuals, seek. And when you find this info, you will be at a very different state, and it will be a very good state. So I think I'm done talking with you guys for now. It's been an hour, and this has been Slapcast 6, so very nice. Or it won't, yeah, it's, it's been cool. Very cool. Bishop.